everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Genema. And over there we have John Lewandowski. How are you doing, John? Hey, pretty good. All right. So this whole week we've had development camp and we've heard all about the Tomasino and, and uh, what is that? Uh, there was uh, Afanasiev and our first, our, first over, our first round pick. Uh, to my recollection, did absolutely nothing. So, that being said, they did have a scrimmage style game today. Yeah. It was fun watching hockey for once because we've been kind of sitting here watching baseball and racing and basketball. And, <laughs> yeah, summer basketball or the Olympic basketball, then the NBA. Not going any further than that. <laughs> Man, it, uh, I, I for hockey. I'm watching boxing and then playing hockey on the PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we're such so ready. It's not even funny. Like today, we were ready, and then I think my computer had to update, and then as soon as it got done updating, John's internet went out. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, oh well, you're not gonna let us be on time today. So just a little heads up on why we're a little later than we want to be. Yeah. Um, so with that being said, um, there's a handful of names that stood out, and we're just going to talk about them. Yeah. So let's get into that. Number one, the lack of standing out from our early picks. Uh, Tomasino, uh, LaRue, um, uh, Afanasiev, uh, those guys didn't stand out all that much. No. Parents did. Yes, he did. Parents did. But he was a third-round pick, so just on the edge of it in that high round. Right. Uh, first three, you're expecting something out of. All right, so let's get into the statistics here. All right, we had... Give me a second here. I got to pull up the rosters. Because for whatever reason, they did not save to my computer. Sorry, folks. Sometimes you got to work from your phone. All righty. So on the blue team, we have Philip Tomasino, Brady James, Thomas Famaka, Jake McLaughlin, Patrick Harper, Mark Delgazio, Chase McLean, Alexander Campbell, Zachary LaRue, Igor Afanasiev, Isaiah Walther, Ryan Ufko and Luke Proka all should have, should have dominated this game. Right. On the gold team, we had Devin Cooley, David Barrett, Cole Smith, Jack Marter, uh, Joachim Kundalik, uh, Grant Mishmash, Gunnar Wolf Fontaine, Simon Knack, Zach Solo, uh, Luke Evangelista, Spencer Stasny, and Luke Reed. The names that stood out off top, um, we're going to start with goaltenders here. Uh, the goalie that, the two goalies that stood out to me, and this is me, were Brady James and Thomas Vamaka. Um, they really stood out uh, uh, apart from Cooley. Yeah. Um, just on the basis of what they were doing, how square they were, they were ready, they're battling. Um, I think that makes for an interesting um, rookie camp in about a month from now. Right. Um, so these guys get to go home for about a month. Some of them will stay and do public works and right. work out there, get used to the Nashville life. Um, some of them will, some of them won't. We'll see what happens. Um, one of the big guys that stood out was was solo. He had two goals. Yeah, he did. But the guy that really stood out, and it's not really hard for him to stand out, is Joachim Condoli. Look, I know I've been high on this guy since we drafted him. Right. But I'm going to tell you, that shootout goal he had, and then but he, the way he plays, the way he skates, he gets to the front of the net. He scored a right. goal going to the front of the net. Something the Nashville Predators have been looking for since Paul Gostad. 
Right, I have. So with that being said, those those two in particular uh, right away stood out to me. Gunnar Wolf Fontaine. I, I mean, I know in the scouting reports I said that he was an amazing skater. Right. But he, I think even saying that is an understatement. He skates kind of reminds me of, of a Connor McDavid, Rocco Grimaldi, your, your Steve Sullivan type, where a little bit smaller will use his speed to be aggressive. Right. Um, something about that says Nashville current hockey. Uh, Grant Mishmash had a goal. Uh, Gunnar Wolf Fontaine as well had a goal. Um, this was all for the gold team. The gold team won, I think it was like five to two. So the blue yeah. team just got dominated. Um, right. Uh, scoring for the blue team was Isaiah Walter. He will be starting his college experience uh, in America this year. Right. Uh, I look forward to what he will do. Uh, and McLaughlin, who is under an admiral's contract at the age of 25. Now, they did range from 18 to 25 years old in this camp. But this camp is a good thing for um, guys like us who don't really get to go to camp. But right. getting a game like this where we're seeing some of the things be able to do, a four-on-four four style game, shootout, see where their skills are, where their skills are not. Right. Um, I'm going to say this. The blue team needs to work on defensive. Yes, play. they do. Um, but they're off. They, you put all the offensive players on a team against two way players, who's going to win? The guys who can play defense and offense are going to beat the guys who can't, right? So that's just showing. And, and, I'm, and I'm saying this because we're not going to be the only ones looking at this. No, we're not. Nashville's going to be looking at this tomorrow morning, yeah, and then they're going to watch the game tomorrow. And they're going to look at it for the next month and go, okay, these are the guys that are can go to their schools. And these are the guys that get, get camp advice. Right. And these are the guys we bring in to replace the guys we're sending on. Now, I'm going to tell you, half that blue team is going to make the roster. Right. Half the gold team's not. Half yeah. the gold team is already sent off to go to college. Condalink is going to college to do one more year at UConn. Which for us is fine. One more year, not a big deal. If he does sign, great. Right. Got a shot. I think Nashville could use a center like him. But given that, um, you know, looking at it, there was a, a, a few things. Uh, Kondalik, his stick handling and skating, the improvement he made from the first rookie camp I saw him to now is insane. Yeah. One, two. Since when did a, a Fanasia get that big? I watched yeah. him last year in the KHL. He was not that big. So, I, I, I mean, there was a lot there. John, anything you want to add? I uh, know. It's nice to get a good look at um, the guys and everything that uh, was going on there. Um, I caught the second part of it, um, but everything looked good. I will agree. The blue seemed a little lacking in defense. Um, gold seemed to be all on the same page is almost like. Yeah. I mean, and, and that kind of comes down to if when you look at the gold team compared to the, to the blue team, the gold team are the older prospects. Been been in the system for a couple years. Yeah, been to a rookie camp before. Probably played together a little bit at rookie camp. The experience is all there. We'll see. Right, it is. is. But I mean, looking at what we saw, I mean, if all we've got to coach is defense, we'll be all right. Right. I mean, we'll be okay. Because looking on the backside of the defense here in Milwaukee, we don't have to worry about that. Right. We have some of the best defensive coaches in the game. As far as AHL goes, I shouldn't say like 
NHL or KHL or anything. Right. Like that. Um, you know, we pride ourselves on our defensive play as much as we pride ourselves on our offensive play. Absolutely. You know, um, you know, uh, we post the Admirals posted yesterday. You know what we what are you waiting to get back into the building for? And I had posted from our Twitter. I can't wait to get back to chanting, cheering, being with my hockey family, friends, being with my kids and creating memories. See, that's, right. this is what the game is all about. It's creating memories you'll never forget. Absolutely. I got, I got to sit here tonight and watch Yoko Kondali go from a guy who's never going to make it to a guy where the, even the Preds people were like, um... Who are you and where did you come from? Right. (laughs) You know, they kept, oh, he's from Germany. He's from Germany. Dude, that is a Redwood from Germany. And not to steal words from JR from uh, AEW, but, (laughs) you know, um, he he built like a brick house. He is. You know, 6'7", 225, skates good, stick handles good, goes to the front of the net, knows exactly what to do to beat the goalie. I mean, right. he scored the goal. He scored five hole on the backhand in front of the net off a rebound. Right. I mean, if you're already knowing what to do, and you did that against Devin Cooley, who's right. no slouch as far as having experience. Right. No. You know, right. that shouldn't have been happening. But Cooley, I think Cooley's coming into this a little lacked because he's sitting here going, well, I was playing in the ECHL last year. I should get an NHL shot or an AHL shot. That's not really how it works when it comes to this league. The guy that works the hardest and produces is going to get right. the game. And you, you, if you don't, will be seeing ice time in the ECHL or you'll be scratched. Right. Which is neither of one of the things you want. I mean, in all reality, I think he could use a year in the ECHL as a starter. Because that's my personal Amen. opinion. Take it for what it is. Um, you know, uh, for us, or for me at least, it was just great to see hockey again. You know. Yeah, it was nice. nice. It, it, it's been, what? Oh, man. Since May? Since the end of the cup. Well, I mean, I watched part of the cup, but I mean, May, I think it was the last time the Preds were on the ice. Right. You know, so May was the last time the Preds were on the ice. That's right. Not- Hockey in general, July 7th. I just looked it up. Yeah. Um, but May was for the Preds. And to see them back on the ice kind of gave me goosebumps because I know I'm not ready for <laughs> all that's about to come right. my way. Um. Speaking of things coming your way, we're going to wrap up this segment of the show. We've got some other stuff coming for you, including NHL news. But where, oh, where will the Coyotes land? Yeah. Stay tuned and we'll give you some hints and ideas of where they could potentially end up. There's some news on the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, we've got, um, we're going to be giving our breakdown of the NHL 22 trailer that just came out. And as always, you know, we forget one thing in our show always, <laughs> whether it be statistics, people, or Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, <laughs> Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call me at 414-800-7585. They will outfit you for all your hockey needs in the greater Milwaukee area. Um, if you're outside the greater Milwaukee area, um, always shop local. Hit your local hockey shop. Please yeah. stay inside the local businesses. Um, anyway, if you have a local business and you're looking for some uh, free advertisement, please hit our uh, our pay- our Facebook page, Twitter page, or Instagram page for further. And uh, me or John will get back to you. Um, yeah. What we're thinking. Um. So with that being said, that's really all we got here for that show um so uh this has been from Milwaukee National 